Hi there! In our previous lesson, we talked about the biotic and abiotic components in an ecosystem, as well as the different ecological relationships. In this lesson, we will be discussing about the effect of changes in the abiotic factors on the ecosystem. If you haven't watched the previous lesson, you can pause this video and watch that one first to better understand our lesson today. We have learned in our previous lesson that biotic components depend on abiotic factors for their survival and growth, meaning biotic components cannot live without the abiotic components. On the other hand, abiotic components do not depend on biotic factors for their existence. The great artist Leonardo da Vinci once said, Water is the driving force of all nature. Rain is liquid precipitation or water falling from the sky. What do you think will happen if huge amounts of rain fall on land? How about if there's no rain for many days? What will happen to the organisms living on land and even in bodies of water? If one abiotic factor is changed or removed, it can affect the whole ecosystem. In this video, we will focus on the possible effects to the ecosystem due to changes in the abiotic factors. Because humans are part of the ecosystem, we need to understand how these changes can affect us and what we can do so all organisms won't suffer. Air is an invisible mixture of gases such as nitrogen and oxygen that surrounds the earth. Without air, plants, animals, and humans will not survive. However, as time goes by, the quality of air has changed. This is due to the increasing population, vehicles, growing number of factories and establishments, continuous burning of plastics and other garbage that results to pollution. Air pollution is the introduction of materials into the atmosphere that produces adverse effects especially to humans and their daily activities. Soil is the basic medium for land-based ecosystems where plants grow and some organisms live. It provides plants with essential nutrients, minerals, and humus from decayed plants and animals. Human activity is the number one contributing factor to pollution. An example of this is throwing and burning of garbage containing plastics. The soil and the plastics contain compounds like nitrates, phosphates, and potassium. When there is overproduction of these compounds, the soil becomes acidic. Aside from that, when we burn wood and grasses, the soil loses the organic matter or topsoil, making it dry and not suitable for planting. The sun is a major source of energy. When there is too much heat coming from the sun, what do you think will happen to the plants and animals? But without sunlight, what will happen to all living organisms? Humans have become the biggest contributors to climate change. The act of cutting down or burning of trees leads to deforestation. Dumping of waste materials anywhere, using plastic products over reusable materials, and overpopulation are human practices that contribute to extreme atmospheric heat. An increase or decrease of the atmospheric temperature has an impact on organisms living on Earth. Despite having adaptive abilities to suit the kind of ecosystems organisms are dwelling, a change of temperature limits reproduction and survival rate. Therefore, organisms must cope with a change in temperature in order to survive. A good example of this are the polar bears affected by the melting of glaciers due to global warming. Water is essential to life on Earth. However, when the quality and quantity changes due to natural and man-made disturbances, 
greater problems arise. Toxic chemicals carried by the water make it harmful for both biotic and abiotic components. Diseases from infectious organisms like cholera, dysentery, and amoeba are brought about by dirty or polluted water. And growth of plankton results to less dissolved oxygen, which may threaten organisms in the water. After learning all these, what can we do to prevent these effects from the changes in the abiotic factors on the ecosystem? At school, we can risk pollution by reusing school supplies instead of buying new ones, biking, walking, or sharing rides to and from school, inviting do-it-yourselfers to teach students how to repair toys and clothes, turning off monitors, lights, and taps when they are not in use, turning on only half the lights in the classroom if there is enough natural lighting, and encouraging other kids to share toys and trade them when they've outgrown them. Bring reusable bottles instead of disposable plastic ones. Hold a clean and green drive. Encourage less use of plastic by bringing packed lunches. Hold an educational seminar or talk on environment-friendly activities. Individually and at home, we can reduce pollution by applying the three R's, reuse, reduce, and recycle. Engaging in gardening or planting activities. Segregating our garbage and throwing it in proper receptacles. If possible, make a compost pit for the biodegradable garbage and help in the recycling process for the non-biodegradable trash. Reducing activities that may contribute to air pollution such as burning of wood and garbage. Choosing to use a bike instead of cars whenever possible. And lastly, bringing a recyclable echo bag when going to the grocery store instead of using disposable plastic. Alright, that's all for now. See you on our next video and don't forget to keep your minds busy! If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.